Welcome back to Media 7. We're discussing the media's Olympics with Nick Wang, Dr Jan Yang and Selwyn Manning. Before we resume the discussion, we thought we'd take a look back. 1948 is where our archives start. Classic uniforms for the seven-member team. The silver ferns are familiar, but not so Mrs Ingram's job. Mrs Ingram of Dunedin is with the party as chaperone for Miss Nairi Lane. 1972 is next up, showing a bit of flesh, but not on the hands. And this. We've got a purple suit made of crimpling, and a sort of one size fit it all, so either you could button it up or it hung on you like a tent. 1976, Montreal. The official strip was less splashy, no purple here. Wise perhaps, as enough attention was already on New Zealand after the 33 nation boycott over our sporting contact with apartheid South Africa. I think every New Zealander probably felt a little bit self conscious. That fella is in Mufti, by the way. 1984, Los Angeles, beige, next. Seoul, 1988, saw a move towards a leisure wear theme. The Scouser Olympics, if you will. Moustaches were an optional extra, and we have no explanation for the photo pose. And to our favourite, Barcelona, 1992. Romantic, piratey shirts, braces, pleated pants, double-breasted suits, collops for the ladies. It was a hit for the times. The tie and the braces matching in and the Olympic colours with the Olympic rings is just superb. Yes, indeed. Perhaps still reeling from the flamboyancy of 92, 1996 Atlanta saw a move to the bland. Short shorts were in, while the formal wear veered toward air hostess chic. 2000, Sydney. The competition wear, space age. While for formal wear, the blokes went for the bank teller look. It's nice and light. Uh, it's pretty fashionable, and uh, I think the colours are great. Uh, I'm thrilled with it, personally. Yeah, I like the gold tie. And 2004, Athens. Practical for the field, or for the bedroom. <laughs> then, 2008. Sure enough, there are fashion crimes for the future to laugh at. Like the formal wear paired with Crocs. <laughs> then there's this from the first day of the Games. We're not sure if that's official kit, but hope so. I'll be honest, I didn't know what Crocs were until they became controversial as part of the Olympic uniform. Um, Selwyn, uh, we tend not to think of the 1976 uh, Olympic Games in terms of uh, us being the shame of the world, do we? We, we tend to prefer to think of uh, John, John Walker winning a, a 1500 metres medal. We, we hear exactly. Um, we, when you think back to uh, that time, uh, really, I guess it was an Olympics from our point of view that actually start to shape some real uh, attitudes and identity with are we as a nation compliant and complicit with a, another nation that is abusing human rights, obviously with the South Africa issue there. So, yeah, it was one at the beginning of perhaps what built up to being what we all know as a watershed moment for New Zealand and really where we started to analyse each other, brother against brother, family against family and what have you for the 1981 tour. I, 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 guess, I guess there's a wider point there about human rights in the Western world because we've seen George Bush deliver some lectures and I think a few people have choked on that. Yes, exactly. And there was a great cartoon, Russell, you know, that we saw in the um, newspaper. It's a cartoonist dream, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's a cartoonist dream of uh, George Bush standing on a podium and underneath it it had human rights and he was trying to actually get uh, to the, being the one on the highest podium. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, Jan, you were a, a student protester in 1989. How many of the goals and dreams that you had then have come to pass now, realistically? No, I, I'm not sure how you, you got the no. information about my protest in 1989. Mm. Uh, yes, I was a student. I was a graduate student uh, in Nanjing, actually. I was very active. Um, in the end, um, uh, the place where I studied, the leader had to write a letter saying that comrade Jian Yang did not participate in the demonstration. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't in the end, there, there, there was no problem for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, yes, um, well, in those years, actually, uh, what we wanted was democracy. We thought democracy would be good for China and could get rid of everything like uh, corruption, inflation, because inflation was a big matter at that time. But after 30 years, uh, no, after 20 years, actually, uh, we thought that, uh, well, we look at China. I personally believe China has made a pro progress. I look at the progress. China has still many problems, uh, including human rights, political liberalization, freedom, media, press. All these, all these are problems there in China. However, if you compare China today with China 20 or 30 years ago, 
It's a different world. Well, well, what view do you think that the Western media should take of the idea of, of China rising? Because it seems to be a really powerful idea that, that's coming out of mainland China at the moment. Should we take it at face, at face value? Now, what, we, what, what I believe is that the Western media, the Western world, still impose pressure upon China on those political issues. And we have moral responsibility. Uh, that is important. At the same time, we should recognize the achievement. That will give some, some, China some incentive to move forward. If we only criticize China without recognizing the achievement, then Chinese will say, what's the point? Right? You always criticize us. We have made effort. We have done what we can do. However, you, do not, you never recognize. So it is important. At the same time, we should also recognize that to integrate China into the international society, it is it's the best way to deal with the rise of China. To contain China, it is not practical. I, I, okay. I can't help but feel we'll, we'll have arrived at a pretty special point the day when they can have someone who annoys them as much as Nick in the room and they can let him into the country because you, you were not allowed into China for the signing of the free trade agreement, were you? No, unfortunately. Um, do you, do you, was, do you sometimes the... think that, that they should just let you in? I'm a journalist. I have to see the facts, OK? I see the facts, the things there. I don't want to see my dream. OK, I don't, I, want to, I don't want to tell lies. Otherwise, my journalist job will be, I think, killed. So what, what do you think the rest of the media should do about the Olympics? Should they report it as just another Olympic Games? Should, you know, should they report the, the politics alongside? How should it be handled, in your view? I, I think it's, uh, it's quite important that uh, we should know what the, what the principle, what the spirits of the Olympics. OK? And, uh, of course, Games. But Games for what? 